All right. Welcome back to Living the Dream. My guest today is the lead singer and guitar player and founding member of the band The Deep Dark Woods. Stick around till the end of the episode to hear a song that he's never played live. That song is a cover of a song called Favorite Marbles by a New Brunswick musician named John Soderman. The story of that and so much more, all on today's Living the Dream. So please give it up for Ryan Bolt. Good, man. How you doing? Good. I'm doing great. All right. Well, thanks for doing this, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Sorry. So what's going on? You're in, uh, on, you're in on terrible? I am. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing there? Well, I live here now. I uh, moved out from Victoria about uh, a year and, you know, eight or so months ago. Oh, right on. Yeah. So you say you're just working on a mix. Are you you doing some recording right now? Yeah, I was uh, actually just uh, mixing a song for uh, Evan Cheadle, the guitar player in Deep Dark Woods. He he's uh, doing his own thing, so it's sound good. Just a solo side project. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he's a great songwriter, and uh, we we did a record, I guess maybe two years ago now for him it was an ep and uh now he's just uh, recording a couple more songs so awesome yeah um so you were just uh, you were just here in st andrews new brunswick for the headlining set of paddle fest how was your experience there oh it was great it was uh i love those small little festivals it reminds me of the uh we did that one in uh, I think it was Salty Jam in Fredericton several yep. years ago. It kind of reminded me of that a little bit. The crowd's great. How long ago was that in Fredericton? Oh, uh, maybe six years ago, something like that. Seven. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. Well, I'm glad I get to see you guys play at Pedal Fest before we did this because yeah. after the show, I got talking with my friends and we discovered something pretty cool which was i'm friends with ara and asa soderman oh and yeah right their father john their father john soderman is a folk musician from cross creek new brunswick yeah right yeah he's great so so we came to find that you and him met in fredericton maybe after that salty jam show maybe yeah i think it may have been then and then we've uh uh I didn't really know too much about him at the time. And uh, I uh, found one of his, I just found a song on the, on the internet and, and I emailed him and uh, he sent me his record that he released in, I think it was maybe 1980 or 81. Uh, Yeah. He sent me the record. I mean, it's worth, you go on Discogs or something, if things worth like $150, it's, it's great. Yeah, I saw that. yeah, he sent me the record, and I love it. So I got more into him, and and found uh, some other kind of newer songs that I don't know if he's recorded them or not, but he put up YouTube videos of him uh, playing them. There's one in particular that uh, favorite Marbles song that's incredible. So, that's that's I, the one that really stands out to you, eh? Yeah, yeah. So I uh, I emailed him and got the lyrics and recorded a little version of it. It's it was kind of just like a you know quick quick uh, recording. Sent it over to him. Is that available anywhere? No, it's not. No, I I sent it to him. That's it. <laughs> That'd be awesome to get a copy of that. 
to hear. Yeah, you'll have to you'll have to ask them. They yeah. I think, think they probably have it. So yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you guys put on an amazing show, by the way, in St. Andrews. That was incredible. Oh, thanks, man. Um, what really stood out to me. So like I've, I've listened to your your records and it's it's folk music. Everybody understands folk but the best part about folk music to me is the live performance because you you kind of get to really see how the song is supposed to be performed and kind of just the the spirit of the song and i just really love like midway through the set i don't i can't remember which song it was but you guys seem to kind of be channeling your inner grateful dead maybe Uh, like kind of transitioned into space there for a couple minutes yeah yeah we love uh love the grateful dead and love all say the uh, 60s you say they're a big influence on your music oh yeah i mean especially the live show and you know uh like the early 70s grateful dead jerry garcia uh i, I mean the working man's dead and american beauty those two records were a big influence on on me as a kid Okay. Working Man's Dead was actually my first record. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 The first time I ever heard uh, Dire Wolf on there, that was kind of, that changed my life. I I remember, uh, I think I was in the ninth grade or something. I was uh, yeah. driving over to my friend's house and, and I bought, I, I, you know, I'd heard The Grateful Dead before, but I put that on and heard live shows and stuff and, I didn't really get it at first, but then that that song, I was like, "Oh, geez, I guess I like, you know, country music, stuff like that." So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it changed I, me. I mean, yeah, I feel like I've had the same experience. Like you, you hear the Grateful Dead, and you're thinking jam music or rock music, and then they kind of let you know that you like this kind of music as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, without them, I mean. Uh, because of the Grateful Dead and and Bob Dylan, I discovered uh, a lot of the traditional music and uh, traditional American music and pe- people like Elizabeth Cotton and, and uh, you know Bill Monroe and all that stuff. So uh, I got I got to go back and uh, find those songwriters and then realized that that was the music that that i love the best yeah definitely and uh so you actually played a show with phil ash of the dead eh yeah yeah we've done a couple shows with with phil so you guys played like you opened i think but didn't you did you personally play with their band yeah yeah we uh the first time we played with them was uh, the opening uh, night of the Terrapin Crossroads uh, yeah. in San Rafael. It's Phil Esch's uh, music venue. And, uh, well, the first time we met him was in, in San Francisco. His son had seen us in Chattanooga. I think he was going to school in Raleigh, North Carolina or something like that. And he drove to the show in Chattanooga. We were opening for Robert Earl Keane. And he came just to see us and then told his dad about it. And so we played in San Francisco a couple months later. And, and we're doing our sound check. And me and Jeff are huge Grateful Dead fans. And uh, I, we're doing our sound check. I, I have my back t- turned and I'm tuning and fixing my amp and stuff. And, all of a sudden, Jeff's like, holy shit, that's Phil Esch is here. Uh, so I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, sorry. No, uh, you, can, you can say whatever you want. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> we played, and it was amazing. We, we uh, did some jamming, especially for him. And uh, mm. after the show, he came up and talked to us and loved us and, and then invited us to play at uh, the opening at his Terrapin Crossroads. And so we came into Terrapin, we drove up and uh, walked into the, the place and 
Phil's in there uh, doing, just playing bass, solo bass by himself. Uh, he was playing Dark Star on, on bass solo. <laughs> it was so, so awesome. Funny. Yeah. And then he stops and he looks at us. He's like, what's good for the bass is good for America. <laughs> uh, that I'll never forget. That's yeah. awesome. And then ever since we've been, uh, we keep in contact and his kids, uh, I talk to them often. It's great, you know, and, uh, and then uh, we were invited back for, they do like a kind of leave on helm sort of uh, uh, ramble type yep. of thing. and we were invited to that and and Jeff and I and uh, Clayton Limpicum who was playing in the band at the at the time uh, he's now in Casey and Clayton if you've never heard them they're amazing yep. uh, uh, but he we got asked to come up and play with them and uh, it was amazing I mean did uh, Brown Eyed Women and uh, Loser we did uh, what else did we do? Um, uh, Not fade away and a couple other songs. And uh, after after we we'd done uh, loser the song loser, he turns to Clayton. He's like, "I love that sharp shit. <laughs> That's what gets us musicians off is that that sharp shit." I'm referring to to Clayton's uh, kind of trebly guitar. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. It sounds it was, like just a surreal experience. It really was. I mean, you know, I grew up sitting in my bedroom, jamming along to Grateful Dead recordings. Mm. And then the next moment, I'm actually on stage with Phil Ash and, and Bob Weir was there. And man, it was, it was incredible. Uh, and and like, before we, we we went on stage, they do this thing where they get in get in a circle and and uh, and like scream in the circle to get themselves ready to go for the show. It was, I mean, me sitting there with my arms around Phil. It was incredible. I, you know, I'll never yeah, that, forget that. That was probably the best musical moment for me. Yeah, like I, how could it not be, really? Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's insane and that was what was that was that like 2014 yeah i think 2014 I think I, 2015 yeah yeah and then we were there again last uh i guess it was february february 2007 or 18 we were there yeah that's that's just a crazy like thing to happen in such a short amount of time from like the start of the band to being on stage and hanging out with Phil Ash. I know I can't I can't even <laughs> believe that it happened <laughs> yeah, that's I crazy. mean that's what I do it for is uh, you know that to me is the most special thing to to be able to play with the people that I I love so much grew yeah, up loving. I mean that that's the dream, right? Like yeah. you, you idolize these people as a child and as a, like growing up as a teen, even as an adult. And then just, yeah. to, just to be a peer. I know. It's just crazy. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like to just to get to that stage, like when, when did you make the decision to be a musician full time? Like how did that, how did that even happen? When did you know? Well, I I was playing in bands uh, back when I was in high school and stuff, and I I I mean that's all I ever really wanted to do was play music and listen to music. It's, uh, I didn't really go to parties or anything like that. I just liked listening to music and playing it. And, and then yeah, I joined a band playing bass when I was like 16 or 15 or something. And, uh, we played shows and toured a little bit. It was, it's, you know, lame music, yep. teen music, but that's kind of when I decided I wanted, wanted to do that. And then I quit that band and there was like a, a lull there for a while. I moved out West and, and, uh, and that's when I started writing songs and then 
eventually moved back to Saskatoon and started the the band in 2004 or five yeah. or something. So what was like, what was your first band? Like, what was the name of your first band? Like what genre of music were you guys playing? <laughs> well, it was like a, it was like blue, bluesy ki- kid blues. <laughs> <laughs> kid blues. I love yeah, it. It, was, it was really bad, but uh, <laughs> you know, it got me to learn how to play, uh, play music on stage. And uh, like th- there was this thing in Saskatoon every Saturday. It was an all ages, uh, jam session thing that you could go there and play three songs with with older musicians so i'd play i'd play bass with with old guys playing the blues and and i learned how to i learned about 12 bar blues and different that's really how i learned music was you know they'd tell me start off on the five and and uh you know so yeah. I had to quickly learn how to what the hell the five was, you know. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was a good learning learning experience. I mean, like I said, the music wasn't the best music in the world, but right, the kid blues. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got I got to learn how to play, which is good. Yeah, what was the name of your band? Do you remember? Uh, well, I backed up a guy named Kyle Riabko. And he's he's from Saskatoon, but he's uh, he now lives in L.A. He's he does he's doing really well for himself. He he does uh, uh, he writes and directs uh, Broadway shows. So he uh, did one uh, with Burt Bacharach actually that was really uh, well received, and it was on Broadway for for a while and then then they went over to london england and did it there but it was i think it was like burt bacharach reimagined or something so they did like modern uh versions of burt bacharach songs yeah Um, i haven't heard that name in a long time yeah yeah so he's, (laughs) he's doing he's doing well he's doing well for himself he doesn't really make records but he uh he He's doing this this musical stuff. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. So, before music, like, did you have a job, or were you too young when you actually got into music? Like, what would you I, be doing today if you didn't become a successful musician? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I probably would be working construction or something. I don't. Uh, I didn't go to school or Just anything. The, I uh, no. didn't have any desire for school. I hated it's school. It's so. always music. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I when I was first starting out this uh, band, I, I was working with my brother, uh, who who uh, owns a masonry company. So we, you know, put up stone and you know that sort of thing. So. That's yeah. probably what I'd be doing now. <laughs> that's that's a huge missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it was it was kind of fun to uh, to get fit and stuff. Now I'm not as fit as I was, but uh, I'm <laughs> glad I'm not a mason or construction worker. Yeah, I I am too. I think we all are. <laughs> um, so the name, the deep dark woods. So I, I, I tried to dig a little to try to figure out what it meant. And the only thing I could even muster of, for a thought is an old poem I found by Robert Frost called yeah. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. So yeah, yeah, there you go. the end of that poem, the end of that poem reads, the woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep. There you go. We got it. <laughs> so is that? Is that the inspiration for the name? Are you a big Robert Frost reader? Uh, I'm not a huge Robert Frost reader, but I mean, you know, just thinking up things. Uh, it just poetic work, and and I mean, there's a lot of a lot of old songs with the mention of deep dark woods or dark woods, yeah. you know, old folk songs and stuff. So. Yeah, and even Joel Plaskett has has a, a song where he mentions that. So. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I ha- he was on the podcast last week. Oh great! Yeah, I love Joel. He's yeah, he's he is great. Yeah, he's got an incredible voice and a good sense of uh, melody and and uh, the old folk songs and that sort yeah. of thing. No, he's very he's very awesome. Um, I and I find the Deep Dark Woods is such a great name because it really does kind of embody the the feel of your music, like the just the poetic lyrics and the darkness in a lot of the songs. Yeah, yeah, sure does. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> one like one in particular. So, so off the new album, the very first song, uh, "Fallen Leaves." I I just I love that song and the just the lyrics are so so just cut to the chase dark and mourning like Mm -hmm. what inspired that song like how do you where do you get the inspiration to write a song like that uh well a lot of it comes from old uh british and and scottish folk songs i love uh, that that side of uh, of music i mean i've been listening to that for ages and ages uh, yeah. so i mean uh comes from that sort of thing and then just personal you know, experiences and i don't know you know i don't really know how to <laughs> yeah. i don't know where it comes from sometimes uh sometimes it just comes out and i don't know what it's about or you know I hear but you. i i love i love uh you know Shirley Collins and and uh, Ewan McCall and Peggy Seeger and all that old uh, English and Irish and um, Scottish folk songs and they're all kind of you know it's a beautiful melody with a lot of times kind of sad lyrics. I guess that's the way it goes with country music too. You know, beautiful melodies. With yeah, the. Sad, the- Words. the contrasting music with lyrics that kind of evokes all, all emotion when you listen. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess just hearing you, you talk about that reminds me, you, do you still do your podcast? I do. I do. Uh, uh, when I, when I have a free time, I, I try to do an episode here or there and, I got a couple that I'm editing right now. I got a Bob Dylan episode. I was going to put it out on his birthday, but I didn't get a chance. And I've, uh, I'm working on one. I interviewed uh, Peter Eden, who was the producer, produced uh, the first couple Donovan records, managed Donovan, and, uh, Heron, and, uh, and uh, you know, tons of other guys yeah so i'm working on one that one's kind of hard because uh, it's my first interview i've never interviewed anybody uh so trying to <laughs> interview somebody that i'm like you know i i really look up respect to. so much yeah it's kinda, it was kind of daunting and and yeah. editing it down is is i mean it was two hours long so uh, it's hard to edit yeah so no. eventually that one will come out yeah it's a, i did i did an episode really on peter thing. eden peter eden uh, a couple episodes ago and and then his wife contacted me said they they'd uh, listened to it and loved it and so that's how i set up that interview it was great that's awesome yeah yeah it's a lot of fun to listen to because like you really dive into the deep cut information like that i just you wouldn't even think to look into you know what i mean like drawing comparisons between each artist and things like that yeah i you know i i guess i have a little bit of uh maybe ocd or something uh it shows yeah i like even (laughs) definitely when listening yeah with my uh, record collection even uh, uh until my girlfriend uh, couldn't find any of my records in my collection i had it <laughs> categorized as uh you know 
Bob Dylan went next to the band because the band played on Bob's records and were his right. band. And then Neil Young went next to the band because that you know there's a couple shows where they played together so like little (laughs) weird details that you have to really know your stuff to be able to find what record you want you have to only be yourself to find that (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) these guys played together (laughs) yeah or you know uh hamish imlach goes next to bert yanch because they're scottish you know that sort of thing so (laughs) So that's so kind of how I do either. No, no, there's not. <laughs> Just only I know how right. to find my records. But I've recently Which changed is all that to, matters. Yeah. But I've recently <laughs> changed it to uh, alphabetizing because uh, I've got like a thousand records and and my girl can't friend can't find any of them. So right. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's uh, kind of how I, I do my, my show is is uh you know tangents yeah this bass player played on that recording you know on the two recordings and then that this person wrote a song for that person you know back in the 60s or something i don't know it's weird (laughs) no it's fun to listen to because like that way we i'm not looking for the songs myself so i don't need to know your categorization right you just kind of lead us on a journey and it's really cool to listen to Oh, great. I'm glad you uh, enjoyed it. I, uh, I don't know if anybody listens, but I've been getting <laughs> comments. It's good. That's good. One last question. I read that you guys played like huge music, fe- music festivals like Bonnaroo and the Newport Folk Festival and Austin City Limits. And mm-hmm. I'm just uh, reading that, like what's next like for Deep Dark Woods? Like, are there any venues on your bucket list or any p- future plans that we'd be interested in hearing about well you know uh just gonna make another record and see where it takes us i guess i i mean it's been a lot of fun playing those places but really honestly i would say that my favorite shows are are kind of the the smaller smaller festivals that uh compared to like the big ones you know like bonner yeah. is great and all but but there's so much music and you know there's it's it's humongous to it's just hard to get in and, uh, right with the smaller ones the people are just there to watch the bands not it's not about the big party and the exactly lot, you know yeah i don't know which is basically what paddle fest was yeah (laughs) just a small town enjoying the music yeah exactly yeah i loved it well we have plenty of small festivals so whenever you guys want to come back you're welcome we we gotta we gotta make our way back it's been too long i mean we i think the last time we were there was was fredericton probably six or so years ago so yeah i'll have to do it yeah my buddy he's in my buddy's in b you see right now and he's a huge fan and he was pretty upset that you guys came right to our hometown and he didn't get to see you oh shit <laughs> <laughs> so you're from st andrews then i'm just like 20 minutes away oh okay from st andrews so it's pretty much a hometown show for me oh great yeah, yeah i love it there yeah it's beautiful all right man the new album yarrow is out now anything else you want to plug or say uh, I think that's about it. I th- we're just working on a new record now. We've got, I don't know, probably four or five songs done and see where that goes. Awesome. I look forward to it. Okay. All right, man. Thanks a lot for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. Take care. Thanks for listening, guys. And to play us out, here is Ryan Bolt playing Favorite Marbles by John Soderman. Standing by the side of the road In the blazing Alberta sunshine 
freedom of the road in the rise Heading into Calgary Looking for a new life Ain't it good to be alive Alone at the table in a run-down downtown bar Despite the lonely old lady For reasons unknown He struck up a conversation It was a mutual meeting of the soul She believed it What it was she was saying She said to we'll meet again someday As a token of this She gave you one of her two favorite things One of her two favorite marbles all there is all that there is all that there is in love last time I was born 1930 as a girl you were born before me in 25 First time we met on a beach in Coney Island It's the summer of 1948 Fell deeply in love Was truly remarkable But I lost my love having you, baby the wife and you raised our daughter but you never again found that kind of love love is all there is all that there is all that there is is love Laying on your deathbed Your daughter came to see you one last time It was then that you told her Something she never knew You told her of me, her real mother told her of our love, our remarkable love, there was something you kept, the memory of me, and you gave them to her, two of my favorite things, gave her my two favorite marbles. The moment she died In the fall of 1980 This is where our past becomes present The instant you died Was the time of your conception 
came into this world a baby girl And I did the same In the fall of 1949 I was my mama's baby boy Freedom of the road. 